A 50 millimeter is normally the first fast prime that people buy. If you're on a crop sensor, it's around about 80 millimeters, depending on how cropped your sensor is. But if you're on a full frame, you get a decent amount of coverage. Normally, because it's a prime lens, it's also very fast. It does give you a decent amount of coverage on a full frame camera, just about enough to shoot the core of the Milky Way. Normally when doing astrophotography, I like really wide shots with the Milky Way streaking across the sky or lots of stars filling the sky. So I use a 14 millimeter and a 24 millimeter. But today I've taken the 50 millimeter out just to see what I can get and just to see the issues I have with the 50 millimeter. So if this is your first fast prime, you can go out and try and get some shots with it as well. Taking the 500 rule into consideration with a 50 millimeter lens, I can only keep my shutter open for 10 seconds. After this, the stars will start to streak. I went out the other night and I shot with the 50 millimeter. The Milky Way was quite high in the sky, so it was really hard to get any kind of landscape in with the Milky Way. This is one thing to take into consideration. You can use photo pills to work out when the Milky Way is gonna be low in the sky. As long as there's not too much air pollution, you should be able to get a big chunk of the Milky Way with say a mountain or something like that in front of it. I use the F1.4 50 millimeter from Canon with a Sigma MC11 adapter on my A7 III and A7 R3. Obviously because I'm shooting at night, I have to have it on manual focus. The 50 millimeter has this little window on the top so I can work out where the infinity point is before I've even turned the camera on. So one thing I found with this lens is at 1.4, at the edges of the shot, you can see you get these weird sort of butterfly shaped stars. There, you can really see it now. And it happens all the way around the shot. So if I come down to the bottom, it's the other way around. So you can see this is an issue with this lens at 1.4. When I go to f2.8, you can see these have pretty much gone. Even when I have the full frame on the screen, you can see the difference. So if you look up here in this top right hand corner, look at the stars at 1.4 and at 2.8. At f4, any kind of aberration like these has gone. The only downside is because it's a 50 millimeter lens and I can only shoot a shutter speed of 10 seconds, I then have to bump up my ISO. But at f2.8, this is okay. So I tried a varied amount of shots from ISO 16,000 down to ISO 6,400. Again, this is ISO 5,000 at 10 seconds at f1.4. We can see these aberrations around the side. There are a few other observations that I found. One of them is if there's light pollution in the direction that you're shooting, you'll tend to lose the stars on the horizon. This is in quite a dark area but there were a few towns just to the south where I was shooting. The Milky Way is just out of shot. So this shows with this focal range, you really need the Milky Way down on the horizon. You need there to be no light pollution in the direction that you're shooting. And also the air quality has to be good. Also, I was shooting wide open with this shot as well. And it's shown these strange aberrations with the stars towards the edge of the lens. Again, with this one, there was a lot of light pollution about, but I was able to pick up the stars. I shot this at f4 and ISO 16,000 at five seconds. I shot this one on the a7 III and for 16,000 ISO, that's pretty clean. So when shooting astro shots with a 50 millimeter lens, you want to make sure that the Milky Way is low in the sky if you want to get that in the shot. You can work this out with apps such as PhotoPills or the photographer's ephemeris. Secondly, you wanna make sure there's no light pollution in the direction that you're shooting. The third thing is to make sure the air quality is good. When the air is a little bit thick, when there's pollution about or dust or sand in the air, as you get closer to the horizon, the stars will start to disappear. This is because the atmosphere is thicker and the light from the stars can't get through. If you shoot in places like Iceland or New Zealand, the air quality is cold and crisp. There's a lot less dirt in the air especially after a storm. So that's the time to shoot. And this is why I like to take a 14 or a 24 millimeter lens out with me when I'm shooting the stars. When the Milky Way is in the sky, with a 14 millimeter, you can get some great shots with the Milky Way sweeping across the shot. So if you look in this shot, you can see I've parked my car and I've got the Milky Way coming above it. I've lit my car with a torch 
However, with a 14 millimeter, there is quite a lot of distortion. So my car does look a slightly strange shape. In doing this little test, I'm definitely gonna shoot more shots with a 50 millimeter. All you need to do is plan those shots properly. And it'd be really nice to get a shot of say a mountain with the Milky Way in the background, just the core just above it. 